Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we're going to talk about the differences between resistance and impedance. Um, they kind of refer to the same thing, which is simply an opposition to the flow of current through a conductor. But resistance is for DC and impedance is for AC. And this is actually a complex the subject that has a lot of twists and turns in it when you're trying to do the calculations but we're gonna break it down and make it as easy as we can but before we get started I just want to say uh, happy Veterans Day today is Veterans Day observed in the US uh, Veterans Day is actually yesterday the 11th and uh, if you've worn the country of your uniform and stood in harm's way you have my respect and you have mine and my family's thank you. All right, on to the show. Start off by a, a little demonstration of resistance to just kind of give us something to compare our impedance against. So if we start here, and we'll just draw a little graph. This is voltage. And this is time and we're talking about a DC so let's say a battery we'll call it a 12 volt battery it is going to output a steady voltage throughout its useful life of about 12 volts <clears throat> excuse me so if we then take that battery and we put it across a resistor what's going to happen well the battery the the, the battery the battery will output a voltage of v a current of I will begin to flow and it will meet with a resistance of R. Now these are all of course related with Ohm's law. So the voltage out of a 12 volt battery through its useful life period is going to be 12 volts. The resistance R, whatever it may be, is not going to change. So since we know Ohm's law tells us voltage equals current times resistance, we also know that the current is not going to change and it will remain steady. And that is basically resistance. So that's our resistance. And if, if, if we drew uh, another graph here of current over time our current would remain steady now let's take our circuit here and instead of a 12 volt battery we will put in an AC current source Okay, so our AC current source will output a voltage of V, and our resistor will still give us a resistance of R. Now, some current is going to flow, but here's where things start to get different, even though Ohm's law still applies. Remember what we said about the DC circuit, the voltage remains current, constant. Things have changed now with the DC, I mean the AC. Well, I can't talk this morning, I should have just stayed in bed. So now we have our voltage 
and we have our time. But now, our voltage is a sine wave. And so, you know, so we'll say that's zero volts. And then that's 12 volts. This is now minus 12 volts. So what's going to happen here when we look at our graph of current over time is our current is also going to be very it's going to be a sine wave too and with just a resistor on here our current will be in phase with the voltage the next question then becomes how do we figure out what the voltage and the current are over time well there's some formulas of course so the first one for voltage the voltage at time t is equal to v0 times sine omega t <clears throat> so what that means is omega t at any time so our voltage at time is equal to voltage v0 times the sine of any time t and the same applies for the current equals i0 sine omega t if we look at our our graph we drew here our vt i mean you can pick it at any point you want but what this this um formula is saying is our current or our voltage is going to vary between these two points this point up here being v0 and this point here being minus v0 so it is only this area here where it can be and that's the same for the current as well which is determined by the load placed upon the circuit look at this is you can say v t v at any time t is equal to i t times r so you can see ohm's law still applying but now it's simply as applied with the alternating current let me redraw our little graph here uh, better so here's our voltage and here's our current yeah that's better I kind of screwed it up when I went up there but anyway so like I said they're in phase that means that there's one is not leading the other and another way that we can look at that is what's called a phaser diagram which will show you the resistance as a vector coming from a point and then that angle there being the phase angle I don't want to get into that too much today I just kind of wanted to touch on the difference between resistance and impedance AC versus DC how one is uh, steady state and the other changes but we're gonna get into more AC theory down the line I think that's enough for today and if you guys enjoyed this, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. 
feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons and an even bigger thanks to all the veterans. That's it. I'm out. Peace.